Hey everyone, today's episode is going to be the first mechanical restoration of a component on my Porsche 911. Garage time. Today's topic is going to be the steering rack rebuild. Now my car took a major hit on the right front and I'm concerned that the steering rack might be compromised. Plus it's old and it's got old grease in it, it needs to be refreshed. So I'm gonna pull it out and do a complete rebuild on the whole front steering system. The rear tires are chocked and the front is up on jack stands, so now it's safe to go underneath and take out the steering rack.
This has been sitting overnight and I've been rubbing it with the degreaser and it's a brass brush, just keeping this grime loose and it should be able to wipe off now. And now all these components are degreased and cleaned pretty well. I used that gray scotch bright to kind of even out the color a little bit. Uh, last thing I want to do is sandblast this part. It's a precision part. You get sand in there and it's going to ruin it. So it's close. It looks good enough to me. It does have some discoloration due to some corrosion on the aluminum, but this is really nice, really in good shape. The steering pinion rack is also in really good shape. I just degreased it. It's uh, shiny. There's no pitting or scoring in any of the gear teeth, no missing teeth, which is what I was concerned about. This is the pinion and it looks uh, great. I don't see anywhere, hardly at all. It's just a few shiny spots, but really nowhere at all. And it does roll very, very freely on the rack. So this is all in really nice shape. I am gonna replace the bearing just for good measure. I, this bearing actually feels really nice. The new bearing is identical to the old bearing. This is from McMaster. I can leave the uh, part number in the description below, but this is just a generic bearing. I think this, is, this bearing has a number on it, 6202. I can double check the McMaster listing, but I believe that is the one that you need, 6202. I put the old uh, you know, part back on here on the bench and I should be able to just hammer this down without a press. This tube is the just the correct size to contact the inner race of the bearing. So I can put pressure on the inner race, not the outer race, the inner one. It's probably about 200, 250 degrees. It needs to be pushed in just far enough for this rubber o-ring to go down inside the hole and create a seal. Now, if you don't push this down far enough, you're gonna to have too much compression on the o-ring and it's gonna be stiff to turn. So I'm gonna push it down a little bit more and then put it together and just make sure that it moves freely, but also creates a seal.
Yeah, so that does create some drag on the pinion. So I want to push it down just a little bit more. Okay, now it's time to start packing the bearings with grease. Turns out gloves are no longer available due to the COVID crisis. So I'm using my fingers. Really just want to push this into the ball bearings wherever as much as you can. So I don't know if you can tell, but it's oozing through the other side, which is a good sign. Because I'm, I'm probably gonna have to pull this back out when it comes time to put the rack in. So before I go too far, I should put the, uh, make sure the rack will go in. The sleeve bearings on the end are replaceable, but they're difficult to find and mine don't show a lot of wear and there's not a lot of play with the rack on the ends. It's just a low mileage rack. So I'm pretty lucky in that regard. So I'm gonna put it back together without taking the ends apart. Okay, now it's together. Okay, prior to greasing everything, I checked the shim stack. So these three shims allow the bearing to be flush with the cover plate. So the cover plate, uh, I got these plated. The cover plate should be flush with the housing and then the bearing race on the outside should be flush with that. So this keeps it captive from moving up and down. And then this shim goes between the inner race and the, and the clip that holds it. And there's an end play requirement um, to be essentially zero or as small as possible. So that's what I'm after. The shims do work. These are the shims I took off. So even though the bearings are new, all the spacing looks right. We'll make sure it doesn't bind after the clips are put in. There's no seal on the back side of this or gasket, but I am gonna just put a real thin layer of this uh, Permatex Forma gasket. Grease typically doesn't leak out, but uh, over time it might separate and come out just a little bit. So I'm just gonna go real light just around the ends here. These are the parts that I also did the chromate plating on last week. Yeah, it was a real hard stop on that, so I don't think it's compressing the bearing at all, but let's make sure it still spins freely. Yeah, so the, just the weight of the rack is allowing it to spin. Which is pretty cool. Okay, next up for a new O-ring. The old washer. And then this is the replated Yoke, this is the replated nut. I'm pretty sure there's a torque spec for that. I'll check that in a little bit and make sure that gets torqued correctly. But right now, we just wanna make sure that it's not binding, which is why I put it together before uh, I put the rack in so I can check that all the seals and the shim stack is correct so this doesn't bind. Just no perceptible play. The last piece to do is right here. And this is the portion that's the highest wear item. Now I got really lucky on mine that this, this item here is really smooth. You can barely see some lines on it. Okay, I couldn't find my uh, knife sharpening stone, so I'm just going back to good old sandpaper. This is 400. I don't think this material is very hard. I think the rack is hardened, but this is a, a sacrificial kind of softer steel. 
Okay, this paper here is 600. It's 1,200. Yeah, that's, that's pretty shiny. I think I'm just gonna go with that. I'm really lucky this car is apparently low miles. I think this is the original rack out of my car. It was wrecked sometime probably 20 plus years ago. So I don't know how many miles were on it because the speedometer is gone. But I want to say that based on the way this is worn, it's definitely less than 100,000 miles. You know, this guy contacts the back of the rack and it actually pushes the rack into the pinion some. This spring, when the cover's on, forces this puck onto the rack. Like I said, putting more tension on those gears. Okay, I looked at the manual and they are calling out for 8,000th clearance between the back cover and the shim stack on top of this puck. And in thinking about it further, the spring is there for constant tension under light steering conditions. That's gonna push the rack up against the pinion under spring tension for zero backlash. But the harder you turn and the more shock there is in the steering rack, then it's gonna push the puck up and it's gonna compress, just compress the spring. But then there's a hard stop between the puck and the cover. And so they want no more than eight thousandths of an inch for the puck to go before it hits the cover. That's five thousandths. Yeah, that's a pretty tight eight. It's probably um, seven. So now there's, there's noticeably more pressure on the, the shaft, but I think that's a good thing. I can feel the pinion making contact with the rack teeth, but it's a smooth motion. I can't find, I have an inch pound torque wrench. It's like a screwdriver. It's in storage. I can't really find it right now. So I'm going to just estimate it with this wrench. This is, you know, a 10 inch wrench and the spec is five to seven inch pounds. So um, if this is 10 inches, that would be like half a pound here on the end. So as I move this, I'm just feeling the pressure and I would definitely say it's less than a pound. It's close enough. In fact, it's really not much you can do to change it anyways. You can't really adjust the height of the spring tension unless you, you know, shim the spring and there are no shims for that. So I don't think it's changeable anyways. It's definitely within the right ballpark. There's no binding. There's no end play on these sides. So I'm good to go. I'm gonna pull this off, put some Loctite in it for the final time, torque it down with a, with a bigger torque wrench and this rack portion will now be done. Okay, 35. In other exciting news, I got this turbo tie rod kit from URO. Let me show you what the turbo tie rod means and why it's better than the uh, stock system. Okay, this is the stock tie rod and this is the turbo tie rod. These ends are mostly the same. It's a tie rod end. The inner tube here, this one's hollow. The turbo one is solid with an adjuster here. The, here the adjuster is kind of formed in the hollow piece. And then this is where the real magic is here where it attaches to the end. This would attach to the end of the steering rack and the turbo tie rod attaches to the same end. But this one has a big rubber compliant bushing in there and it flexes and pivots. Whereas this one is a more rigid connection. It's really a socket joint that is firm. So there's no rubber in here. It's like a firm tight, fit so that you get more responsive steering. They also sent me the new rubber donut piece that is the, really the connection between your steering rack and your steering column. So this is a consumable item. It does have some rubber isolation here and some spacers that prevent it from failing, but uh, this is an important piece to replace, especially if your car is 50 years old 
this can deteriorate and you could actually lose control. And then of course there's the rubber boots that are the right diameter here for the turbo tie rods. And then these spacers are also needed for the turbo tie rods. These go between the rack and the tie rod threads here. This is the right size. It's not the right size. I thought they went here, but that's a different kit. That changes the bump steer. Okay, on my rack, these do screw in all the way. Um, there's plenty of thread engagement, so depending on the distances, it may or may not need the spacer. I'm gonna put it together loose and of course, probably put the spacers in. I can always take them out so I don't lose the spacers. I think I can reuse these spring retainers off the old boots for the new rack. I think it's gonna be easier to put this on first and then slide that one on. I'll do this again. the washer on there. Okay, I think that's better. Okay, there's one side down. Okay, and there it is. So I'm not sure if a spring uh, retainer goes on this side or not. It seems pretty secure. Okay, and there we go. It's the completed steering rack. I love how the manufacturer is so proud of this rack. It's really well made. Lots of lettering on it. They got their brand name all over it and codes and features, German part numbers, date codes. Okay, as much as I want to put it back in the car, it's probably not the best time to do it because I haven't finished the undercoating underneath. There's still some unfinished repair areas in the suspension pan. Also in the floor pan and pinch weld area, I repaired a lot of damage to the car in those areas and so the undercoating is disturbed. So I do want to touch up the undercoating before I reinstall the fuel tank, which is done and also before I reinstall the steering rack. So, maybe next week. To watch how I restored the undercoating, check out this video right here.